They look like a bear cub to any other bear. They're very but they're really extremely vicious. Welcome to our worship service. I'm going to draw your attention to the windows over here on the west wall for a moment. Look at the way the, the evening light is coming through those windows, turning them so golden in their color. Isn't that beautiful? Makes us think of the love of our Lord, which is what uh, the theme is here on Monday, Thursday. Uh, the word Monday comes from the word mandate mandate because at the end of the gospel reading jesus will say to his disciples a new mandate or commandment i give to you that you love one another that's how the thursday got its name so we'll be meditating upon those matters tonight also upon the lord's supper this is the night that jesus institutes the sacrament for his disciples We'll have the ringing of the bell, followed by our opening hymn, God Bless Your Worship This Evening.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In him is salvation, life, and resurrection from the dead. By him we are redeemed and set at liberty. God be merciful unto me and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. reading for Monday Thursday is from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, beginning at the first verse. And in this reading, the Lord is instituting the Passover for Old Testament Israel, and Jesus then takes that Passover meal and turns it into the New Testament meal of the Lord's Supper. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to his father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs shall they eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Nothing that remains until the morning, you sh anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. As a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. Here ends our Old Testament reading. <clears throat>
required. Our epistle reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 11th chapter beginning at the 23rd verse. And in this reading, he's describing how the practice of the Lord's Supper was passed down among the early Christians. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Here ends our epistle reading. We pray now our gradual responsibly. <clears throat> Christ hath humbled himself and become obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. According to St. John, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, o Lord. This reading we hear how Jesus washed his disciples' feet on this night. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, <clears throat> and glorify him at once. Little children, Yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now also I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also 
are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends the gospel for this evening. Praise to thee, Lord Christ. We confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sing our sermon hymn. Please be seated. Please rise. The text for our message this evening is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We've been preaching a sermon on the signs that Jesus says must take place before his return. And this is another installment of that. 
Matthew 24 and beginning in the 12th verse. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the word of God. Please be seated. Well, back in February, I was watching the U.S. Olympic trials for the marathon. And it was interesting to watch what was happening with the different runners. Some of them were, were a little off pace. They weren't keeping up with the group as they should be. There were others who were right there. They were, they were close to the head of the group. They were pacing well. But you could look on their faces and you could see they were hurting. <laughs> It was hurting as they ran. And then there were a few, just a few, who were running at the head of the pack, and they looked as natural and comfortable as could be, like a walk in the park. They were right where they needed to be in their race, all on the same road, but having very, very different experiences. In our text this evening, Jesus talks to us about faith and faithfulness as we are approaching the return of Christ. What's happening in the end, he's telling us that our faith and our faithfulness will go through times of trial. We're going to experience trials, just like those marathon runners. Some of us are going to be struggling as we go, as the trials come in life. Some of us may even be in pain because of those trials. The first thing that Jesus notes is this. He says, lawlessness, lawlessness will be increased. Now, I'm thinking back to the middle of last year about some events I saw unfolding on TV. I, I turned the, the, the set on and I saw this news and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Uh, these were events in Philadelphia and also out in California. What was happening is that mobs of people would go into a store all at once and they would just walk in and grab anything they wanted. Grab anything they wanted off the shelves and walk out. And there were so many of them, the, the store owners couldn't control it. They couldn't stop the situation. In some of the cases, police even came and arrested some of the people, but it was happening so fast with so many people that they were walking off with all of these items from the stores. If there's ever an example of lawlessness <laughs> at work in culture, boy, that is it. I can't imagine being the business owner under those circumstances. How out of control that would feel in those lawless, lawless times. Notice what Jesus says here. He says lawlessness will be increased. It will be increased. That means that somebody is behind this lawlessness and, in, and encouraging it and causing it to spring up and to happen. And we know who that troublemaker is, right? It's the same troublemaker that God's people have had all along going back to the beginning, the tempter. The evil one, he will be hard at work. As hard as God's people may be at work, as they're enduring the trials of the end, he will be very much at work. The Holy Scripture is warning us here, as Jesus says, that it will be increased. The second thing that Jesus says here is that the love of many will grow cold. Cold toward one's neighbor. Cold toward the Lord. We see this here in American culture from time to time. Uh, in America, there's been a cycle of about every 50 years. About every 50 years, religion is on the rise. And then it declines for 50 years. And then it comes back up. If you go all the way back to in, in the colonial days. You can find this pattern in American religious life happening. And we're right now watching what's happening in our culture, and we're coming into a low point, and we're wondering what's going to happen. Is America going to turn around? 
Are we going to trust in the Lord? Is the love of God's people going to increase? Or will it fail and fade in these difficult days we see? We're waiting to see. Is it, ta- is it that time just before Jesus returns? Is, is what Jesus describes here, is it happening now that the love of many is growing cold? We're waiting. We're waiting to see. And then Jesus says this. He gives us these warnings. And then he says, the one who endures unto the end will be saved. It's just like with that marathon. It's not a sprint, is it? If you sprint at a marathon, forget it. You will never finish. (laughs) You've got to pace yourself. You've got to have that endurance, pacing yourself as you go to make your way. When, uh, when When my kids were young, they all ran cross country. That was one of the sports they did in school. And the beginning of the season kind of worked like this. The coach would send him out and he'd say, go run. Go run slow. Run this many miles. Take your time. And they called that building your base. You start out slow, putting in your miles. And then as the season progresses, then the training gets more intense. Then you start working on your speed. But you've got to learn to pace yourself if you're running a longer distance. And God is giving us pace here in the Scriptures. He gives us this pace for our lives. Daily prayer, weekly worship. That's the pace that God sets for us for that endurance in the days that will challenge us in the end. And here we are in Holy Week. Pausing, pausing in our lives, pausing to consider what our Lord is teaching us, what he's calling us to as he teaches us to love one another. We're taking tonight a time of rest, rest in his presence. You may be thinking to yourself, Pastor, you have to stand up and sit down. doesn't feel like rest. <laughs> But we're talking about rest for our minds, our hearts, our souls that we need in our lives. Rest, that spiritual rest is part of the pacing that we need. When those, uh, when those marathon runners get started and they're going on that long, long run, they can't take pizza and an Italian sub with them for the run. Doesn't doesn't work so well. (laughs) They can't do that. But they can take food with them. About mile 20, they say you hit what they call a wall. And that's when what the, the sugars that are in your muscles and in your liver and stuff like that, they're getting depleted, they're running out, and your body has to transition to running off of the fat that you have. And the people hit that point and they lots of them drop out. They can't carry on like they did. But there's a secret runners will use. It's called a running gel. A running gel. And it's kind of like a, a, a tube full of jelly. Okay? And it's a simple sugar that's in there. It's called glycogen. It's exactly the sugar that your muscles burn when you are exercising. And they can, they can suck in that jelly and sustain themselves in that long, long run. They've got that special food that they're using as they go. Tonight, we have a special food. It's not gel, okay? I won't give you a gel tonight. But we have the very bread of heaven for us tonight. The very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That heavenly food for the forgiveness of our sins, for the renewal of our lives, for the strengthening us that our hearts might burn with this love that Jesus is talking about as he teaches in his disciples at the end of his race, his trial, as he's on his way to the cross. 
Jesus finally tells us this in the passage. The gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed to all nations. And we have seen, we have seen in this era that word of the Lord fulfilled. The, the gospel has gone out to all nations of the earth. I mentioned just on Sunday, 1913, even a church in Antarctica <laughs> was built. The gospel has reached all lands. We are truly at a moment when these symbols and signs that Jesus described have been fulfilled. And now we're waiting to see what Jesus will do. And as we wait, our calling is this, to continue to proclaim that love of Jesus, the gospel of Christ to our family, to our friends, to our neighbors, to make known to them who God is and what he has done for us in Jesus in these last days. And Jesus, our pace setter, he will sustain you. He will sustain you in that loving, heartwarming work of his gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We continue with our Lenten verses. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. We we continue with the offer. We lay at thy request the costliest offerings on thy shrine. For when we give and give our best, we give thee only what is thine. Amen. confess their sins and who hunger and thirst after righteousness. 
For as much as we intend to come to the Lord's table, it becometh us to diligently examine ourselves, as St. Paul exhorteth us. We find when we do this that we are under the dominion of sin and death. To save us from death, make us children of God, and exalt us to everlasting life, our Lord Jesus Christ hath had mercy on us, took our nature upon him, and himself become obedient unto death. In order that we should believe this with greater confidence and be strengthened in cheerful obedience to his will, he hath instituted the sacrament of the altar, in which he giveth us his body and his blood to eat and to drink. Whoever eats this bread and drinketh this cup, firmly believing the words of Christ, liveth in Christ, and Christ in him, and hath eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses, and raised again for our justification. For all that he hath done, we are bound to give him most hearty thanks, to take up our cross and follow him. And as he gave commandment, to love one another, as he hath loved us. For as we are all partakers of this one bread, and drink of this one cup, so are we all one body in him. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask you in the presence of God who searcheth the heart, do you confess that you are by nature a most unworthy sinner, and that you have grievously offended against him in thought, word, and deed, and have merited only his wrath and condemnation? I do so confess. Do you trust entirely in the mercy of God in Jesus Christ? I do so trust. Do you promise heartily to forgive others as you believe that God forgives you? and to serve him henceforth in newness of life to the glory of his holy name. I do so promise. Let us humbly kneel and make confession unto God, imploring his forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. I invite the congregation to kneel. O God, our heavenly Father, I confess unto thee that I have grievously sinned against thee in many ways, not only by outward transgressions, but also by secret thoughts and desires, which I cannot fully understand, but which are all known unto thee. I do earnestly repent, and am heartily sorry for these my offenses, and I beseech thee of thy great goodness, to have mercy upon me, and for the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to forgive my sins and graciously to help my infirmities. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, forgiveth us all our sins. As a minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you, who do truly repent and believe in him, the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. On the other hand, by the same authority, I declare unto the impenitent and unbelieving, that so long as they continue in their unrepentance, God hath not forgiven their sins, and will surely visit their iniquities upon them if they turn not from their evil ways and come to true repentance in faith in Christ, ere the day of grace be ended. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
that thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The line is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who on the tree of the cross didst give salvation unto mankind, that whence death arose, that life also might rise again, and that he who once by a tree overcame might likewise by a tree be overcome, through Christ our Lord, through whom with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes. On the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, We eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it unto them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you. Blah. 
blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins.
Please rise for the Nunc Dimittis. <laughs>
reproach flatly bear. Then you call me someday.